This is one of the most classic cars ever. It's a 1967 Shelby GT500 Fastback Mustang. And this is a new version of it. It's the 2020 Shelby GT500. And under the hood of the old vehicle is a giant seven liter V8 that when it was new put out 350 horsepower. Under the hood of the new one, it's a supercharged 5.2 liter that puts out 760 horsepower. And I had a chance to take both of these cars to the drag strip. And the question is, how much faster is a new car? Well, there's only one way to find out. Back in 1967, the Shelby didn't have a whole lot of tech. In fact, probably the most interesting tech on the vehicle was the dual carbs and the AM radio, but the brand new car has a lot of cool tech. Let's start with line lock. The Ford guys were kind enough to show me how to make a burnout easy. So now we'll talk about how to get into the line lock. So if you press the Cobra button, so track apps, press OK, and then go up to line lock. Yep. I press OK. Okay, so it's a, uh, let me talk you through it and then we'll try it. So it's a three step process. Yep. It's hold the OK button, it's about four seconds, you see like a wheel build up. Yep. And then you release the OK button. Okay. And it'll say press the brake pedal firmly. They ain't kidding. Firmly. Firmly right. to the ground. While it's still pressed, holding it to the floor, you're going to press the OK button for about two, like one, two, and release. It's not a poke, okay. and that's not a hold. Okay. At that point, you should feel a little vibration in the brake pedal. Yep. That's the front brakes locking, yep. and the rear is releasing. All right. At that point, you'll see a timer of 15 seconds. That's your line lock. You can let go of the brake pedal. You can do that. To exit line lock, it's three ways. Either time's out, press the brake pedal, or press OK. Right open And of course, launching a new Shelby GT500 can be tricky, but not if you've got launch control. Once again, Ford showed me how to make getting the perfect launch every time easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, so let's uh, go to the Cobra. All right, to the Cobra. All right, Cobra yeah. again to get to the menus. Okay. Let's click OK for track apps. Yep. Then down to launch control to set your RPM. Click on RPM, your selectable. We went. 200 up that last yep, time, yep. it was just a hair too much. So let's bring it down to 1500 RPM. Okay. This is a two foot operation. Yeah. Firm on the brake. Yep. You don't have to mash it. Firm on the brake. Uh -huh. Gas to the floor. Okay. As soon as you see the yellow light, flip your brake and then you're gone. Okay. You don't feather, you keep that gas pedal hammer the whole way. 760 ponies, you got you it. You got it, brother. Yep. All right. All right. So the question is, can I get into the tent? We're at about 2,000 feet above sea level, so we're not at sea level, which is going to slow the car down. Is it 3.30 to 60? Yeah, I bet it is 3.30 to 60. But uh, you probably need to be at sea level under ideal conditions with somebody that is much lighter than me. Let's say Tommy. All right, there's my time slip. Uh, my ET, not so grand, 11.491. But look at the speed. 130 miles an hour, that's pretty fast. So I'm a half a second out of being a 10. Um, yeah, that's not good, that's embarrassing. Uh, but uh, yeah, this should be, according to Ford, a 10 second car. It probably needs a little bit more uh, of an experienced driver to, to actually attain that. So this is a Haggerty car. So it you is. insure it and you own it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this uh, is actually use this in, in a lot of our driving events. Let, let people get behind the wheel and experience what these things were like. Now this is a 67 Fastback GT500 Shelby. Correct. Which means it's got the 428 7 liter V8. So yes. how many horsepower is it putting out? It was rated at 355 horsepower, and, and which by today's standards doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that was a huge number in 1967. Yeah, compared to 760. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> how, 
How fast was the zero to 60, do you remember? You know, later today, we're gonna to take it out on the drag strip and we can tell you exactly how fast that's gonna be. But, uh, you know, the quarter mile, you're looking at uh, 14s, 15s, something like that. Yeah, 10s, 11s with this, depending on who's driving it. And uh, if you were lucky enough to buy one of these back in the day, how much would it cost? $4,200. Okay. And compared to a standard Fastback Mustang in 67, that was $2,500. So it was a substantial premium. Double. Yeah, yeah, nearly. I, this was a purpose-built drag car. This was meant to go as fast as you possibly can in a straight line, whereas the GT350, back in the day, that was much more the road-going car. And, you know, we'll get a chance to take it out on the road, um, but, you know, really, it has pretty good road manners. I mean, a lot of people think that it's gonna have this giant engine up front, uh, be way off balance and snorty and, and what have you, but it actually goes to, it'll cruise 65, 70 without making you feel like you're beat up at the end of the day, but yet, when you step on it, it's just got that cool, old-school American muscle sound to it. Let's give it some beans in this parking lot. <laughs> and just like that one, it's an automatic. How many gears does this one have? Three. This is a C6 automatic, three-speed. Uh, it'll pull in first gear up to about 55, 60 miles an hour, and then nice firm shift into second and, and yeah it's a, it's a fun car the funny thing to me it's very clear that uh, the first generation Mustang the engine compartment was not designed for an engine this big so you look at how this is absolutely shoehorned in here and good luck to the poor person that has a change out on the spark plugs and I will give you a little bit of a clue this last spark plug here yep. it nearly requires you to have to remove the brake master cylinder just to, uh, just to change the spark plug sure. well yeah dual four barrels yep yeah. yep and uh, no it's a uh, it's a fun car <laughs> The classic Shelby is worth about $110,000 because it's a driver, but I did not want to be responsible for taking on the drag strip and breaking Haggerty's classic car. It's just too old and too cool to risk, but nevertheless, Haggerty was willing to take it on the drag strip and show us how fast it is in the quarter mile. Pretty impressive for an over 50 year old car. 15.2 seconds with a trap speed of just over 91 miles an hour. All right, here we go. Second time. So reaction time, I guess, doesn't matter because we're just going on yellow. pretty bulletproof and pretty easy to launch this. Yes, this is a track car. Ford designed it to go on the track. It can do hot laps in it and it will do really well, but I think it's much more at home, at least for a driver like myself here on the track. there you have it that was the most fun I've had today now that last run was 11 3 <sighs> trying to get into the tens but we've learned something very important the difference between a 1967 GT 500 with 350 horsepower originally and this brand new one is about five seconds at the drag strip and that is an eternity